The physics concept that this movie defies is actually the Newton's law of motion, specifically the Newton's first law of motion, which mentions that an object at rest will remain at rest, and an object in motion will remain in motion in a straight line at constant velocity, unless an external resultant force acts on it. This is not the case for the movie. As seen from the movie, the bullet does not remain in a straight line. It curves around the whole room, and in the end, the bullet kills the person that shot it in the first place. Furthermore, there is nothing in the room to provide a centripetal force for the bullet to continue its motion in circular motion. Due to the presence of an external force, the object should have slowed down and not remain at constant speed. However, in the movie, the bullet just went past each and every person without even stopping, and it continues moving at constant speed. You're okay. Hey, look, I'll throw it up. All right, ready? All right, Adam. Upside Down shows that love does indeed conquer all, even the laws of gravity. In this clip, Adam was trying to pull Eden down into his world. Both Adam and Eden are from different worlds, each attracted to a different point mass, which is their own planet. Hence, at this point, as Adam was pulling Eden down, Eden was still experiencing a gravitational force due to her own planet. In actual fact, there would be a neutral point where Eden would experience a zero resultant force, as Eden would have experienced gravitational forces due to both planets equal in magnitude but opposite in direction. However, as could be seen from the clip, Eden only experienced gravitational force due to her own planet throughout the journey down to Adam's world, even when she was this close to Adam. This whole scene defies the logic of physics, as Eden should have escaped the influence of her own planet's gravitational field and only or largely experienced gravitational force due to Adam's planet.
the Spider-Man scene. Looking at it, it seems like it clearly defies physics. Or does it? Assuming that the subway is 154400 kg and has 900 passengers with the average weight being 70 kg, the total combined weight of the subway and its passengers then becomes 217400 kg. And taking that the speed of the subway is 30 meters per second and the train takes 50 seconds to come to a stop, the force exerted by the train on Spider-Man is MB over T which is calculated out to be 130440 newtons. Seeing how Spider-Man uses up a lot of energy to stop the train, theta must then be negligible as the vertical tension in the string is very high as compared to the horizontal tension. Now, we assume that Spider-Man's web is made up of 10 smaller webs, each of radius 2 mm. That makes the area of the rope 10 times pi times 0 0.002 square. And so, the stress in the web is force over area, which is 1038 megapascals. Now, looking from the table, we can round these 1038 megapascals to approximate it to 1031 megapascals. Then, the Young modulus is taken to be 257.8 megapascals. However, Obweaver spiders have a Young moduli of up to 12,000 megapascals. So, the spider silk can withstand the tension caused by the train.